guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa and I'm here on YouTube to talk all things curly hair. Now today I'm gonna to show you how I cut my own hair. I cut my hair dry and I use some hairdressing scissors which were about a tenner on Amazon. I will pop a link in the description. They're super sharp and really good. Don't use nail scissors or kitchen scissors or anything like that. Get yourself a set of proper hair shears and don't use them to cut anything except hair. Um, that way they'll stay sharp and you're not gonna end up damaging your hair. The only other thing you're gonna need is a clip or if you have a lot of more hair than me, you might need two or three clips, but I just used the one. And I'm gonna show you in this video exactly how I cut my hair. So I started with day three hair and the first thing I'm going to do is just section it off. So I'm taking my thumbs underneath my ear here and I'm just going to gently separate the top from the bottom and just clip that top section out of the way. Now I'm splitting this bottom section in half evenly and bringing it over my shoulder and then I'm just going to kind of separate the curls, have a good look in the mirror and I just need to now trim the end of every single curl. So I'm not doing any shaping here. I'm literally just trimming the end of every curl. And I do this first to make sure that I don't miss any curls because they all need a trim. And I just sort of throw them over my shoulder once I'm done so that I know which curls I've done and which ones I haven't done yet. So as you can see, just literally cutting straight across the ends of each individual curl. Just like that. And I just carry on doing this to every single curl on my head. Now, I don't have an absolute ton of hair, so it doesn't take me too long. Um, if you have a lot more hair than me, then yes, this could take you a little bit of time. But I'm being really careful, especially with these bottom layers, because I've been growing my hair now for, well, about a year. And I finally feel like I have some length, so I'm really, really being careful to just take off the very ends because I don't want to lose my length at all. I just want to reshape and do a tiny, tiny trim. So by first of all, just cutting the very, very ends off all of these, I just make sure that everything's had a trim. And then afterwards, I will take a look and I'll be able to start shaping. So now I'm just taking a look. And I can, you can obviously, you can see as well as I could that one side is quite a bit longer than the other and I knew that this was the case. So looking at it, the right side, so my left, was a fair bit longer than the other side. So I'm just trying to make sure that I've taken it in equal halves so it's sitting right, and I'm just going to now double check that this is an even section above my ears as well because I was a little bit concerned for a second that I'd taken down more hair on one side than the other. So I've decided to just add a little bit more hair and just make sure that line that my thumb is making there is really, really straight. Now, I know that the bottom layer is still not quite even, but I decided to just trim all the curls from this extra section so I didn't forget. And then I'm gonna go in and even up that bottom layer. So just like before, trimming the ends off every single curl. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this bit up because this is exactly the same as in the last section. Now, when I get to trimming the back hair, I like to pull it out kind of at an angle from the back of my head backwards and then just take it round to the front to trim it because this is um, to do with the shape of your head and the overall shape of the cut that you want. So obviously, if you pull all your hair forward and cut it, um, then it, it's going to sit differently. It's going to angle differently. So if it's the front hair, then I bring it forward. If it's the side hair, like there, I take it out to the side and snip it. And if it's the back hair, I take it out. We're basically kind of 90 degrees from my head, roughly, um, depending on where the hair is on my head, if that makes sense. And this just helps the cut to um, sit better, the hair to sit better, and for it to be a nicely rounded, angled shape. So again, on this side, I'm just doing the same, taking the hair out. But then you can obviously, once you've pinched the hair, where you want it, you can then bring it round to the front to give it a good old snip, like I'm doing there. Now, constantly as I'm going, I am checking in the mirror by pulling the hair forward over my shoulder, checking that it's even. Now, for doing the layers, 
I don't want to pull the hair completely taut because my hair has different curl patterns and most of us have different curl patterns. But by holding up the sections, both side sections, I can see where the curl is longer on one side than the other. Whereas if I was to pull it tight and then cut, then it doesn't take into account for the differing curl patterns. But by doing what I'm he doing here and just holding those curls out like some weird floppy ears, I can see how those curls are actually going to sit normally on a day-to-day -day basis and then I can work out with those layers which ones need a little bit more cutting off. So yeah, as I said before, all the hair on the right side of the screen is longer than the hair on the left side of the screen for some reason. So I'm just having a look at all these curls, trying to even them up and um, just again snipping a little bit off the ends. Always take less, you can always go back and take more off, but you cannot stick it back on. So if you're not sure, take off less. So I'm just roughly checking that the bits at the back that I can't see as well are roughly the same length. Um, again, pulling it tight is not really a true indication of what it's going to look like curly because like I said, different curl patterns um, and even different wash days, sometimes it can spring up differently. But it's worth just double checking that the, the layers on each side are roughly the same. So I just carry on doing this process of loosely holding up kind of corresponding bits of hair from each side and seeing whether they sit at round about the same length. And if they don't, then evening it up. All this hair has already been trimmed, so you don't have to worry about taking the other side any shorter. You're just evening up those layers because you want the layers to be the same length as you go up the hair on both sides. So now for the back section, um, just having a look in the mirror to see if there's anything outstanding that that looks weird but it looks okay so we're gonna move on to the next layer so just sectioning off kind of the crown area now and just get that out the way make sure that it's even on both sides and so now let's look at this set of layers so just the same as before having a look <laughs> you can see these are really way off and wonky what you can also see just under my hand there is a step between one layer and the next. So I'm just going to try and even that out by trimming the layers so it looks more graduated so I don't have a layer, then a step, then another layer. So I'm just trimming these curls so that I get a much more kind of fluid, gradual layer instead of a shelf because nobody wants shelfy layers. Well, who knows, maybe you do and if you do that's fine but I personally don't want shelfy layers. So as before, just taking it out to the side to get that the angle that I'm looking for, that sort of 90 degrees, and then I can bring it forward to cut it. I have to say, watching this back, some of my facial expressions are something else, so I apologise, look at this. <laughs> so now I can see that shelf is pretty much gone, so now I'm going to concentrate on the other side, evening up these incredibly uneven layers, um, <laughs> as you can see. It's much longer on that side. It is also a little bit looser. The curl in this section is looser, as you can see. So that might be one of the reasons why it's ended up that much longer over time um, for some reason. Sometimes your curl patterns can even change and you can get certain sections which are curling better for a while and they're not so good. So maybe it was even at some point, I don't know. But anyway, I'm just keeping on evening it up. I am also bearing in mind that this section might be just quite stretched out so I'm not taking off too much um, and that's the joy of it is that when you cut your own hair you can wait and see how it's going to look after a wash or two and then if you need to take more off you can because you know sometimes hair curls differently each time we wash it so don't go crazy take small amounts and you can always do more later. So just checking these layers they're looking a bit more even um, taking a tiny bit more off but as I say I'm not making them completely even in case that straighter side does bounce up a bit more when I wash it. As you can see a lot of the haircut uh, time is spent checking, double checking, triple checking, a lot of looking in the mirror and just checking that everything is even and evening it up um, because that you know that's it makes more sense to triple check it and get it even than to have to do it again later. So just lots and lots of looking. Now this is really important every so often to stop, shake your hair out at the root like that and see how it's sitting because something, a curl might pop out and you think, right, oh, hang on, that's out of place and it needs just a bit more cutting or, you know, the length needs slightly trimming. Um, like that one curl there, you can see at the front, which 
it's determined to be longer than the rest, <laughs> even though I keep trimming it. Uh, so definitely, definitely give it a good old fluff out every so often. And this will, will throw up any curls that need to be trimmed a bit more. So now it's time to do the next layer. I think this is probably the second to last layer. And just taking it from an inch or two above the last one. You can do as many layers as you need to, depending on how much hair you have. And so I'm just splitting it again down the middle and bringing it forward on both sides. And um, start to see some volume um, where it needs shaping again. So we want to remember to trim every curl. And then I can see just by looking at that one that it was so much longer than the other side. So um, I'm trimming these quite a bit more. Just to save going back and doing it again afterwards. Look how long that curl is. What's going on with that bit of hair? Huge big bit coming off that one. <laughs> that was my face of nerves like, oh no, what if I've done it wrong? But I knew because that curl had been annoying me for ages. I knew it needed cutting like significantly. So just going through all the curls and see here I have kind of two curls combined. So separating them so that they can be the right lengths that they need to be. So it's looking a bit better and just checking, checking, checking that the shape looks right. Do the back, pull it out towards the back and then bring it forward. Again, I know that this side, the layers really need some sorting out. So this side, the layers are shorter already. So I'm just going to be careful and trim these as before. Just taking the ends off this side and evening out the layers so we haven't got any um, funny steps or anything. Now I'm reaching one of my most difficult, tricky areas of my head, which is my right kind of to the side at the back. Um, it's really weird and flat. So I just want to check, check it against the same layer on the other side and decide what I'm doing with it. You can see by looking that the curls look a bit weird and frizzy just on that section. They can go quite straight and almost zigzaggy and it's just, it's just my worst section. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to double check that it was going to be even with the other side and same at the back, pulling it back then bringing it forward to snip. Oh, I was missing it there, I think. <laughs> Sometimes it can be quite tricky, especially with the back pieces, to be able to see what you're doing. This is where you need a mirror. Okay, so again, give it a bit of a shake, see how everything's lying, see if there's anything standing out that means you really need to adjust it. Now it's time to get the second mirror out and use that second mirror to have a proper look at the back of your hair and see what's going on because obviously you've been bringing the back sections forward and that does a good job of kind of getting it started but you definitely need to look at the back with a second mirror and you can see if there are any random pieces that are too long or that are just sitting weirdly like that one and then you can grab them while you're still looking with the mirror hold on to it while you grab your scissors bring it forward and then snip it that's the best way that I have found to do the back. So it means going back and checking again, check again with the mirror. You can see how weird that bit is sitting. Um, so again, like the other bit that was sitting strange, I don't want to take it too short in case when I wash it, it does curl right up. Um, but yeah, what is going on with that? <laughs> Trying to finger coil it a bit and see if it will sit a bit better and a bit bouncier. Um, but just having a thorough look through those layers at the back and see See if it looks roughly like it's sitting okay. And then I'm just checking in my other mirror as well. So I've decided this bit needs a bit more trimming. So again, grab it, hold on to it, pick up your scissors and snip straight across. And there we go. Again, fluff it out, check it in the mirror as always. Okay, last layer time. Now, although I wear my hair in a side parting all the time, yes, I know I'm such a millennial, um, I am actually going to split it down the middle to cut it to make sure that the layers are even on each side. So if you start with it in this middle parting, make sure the layers are even. You can then afterwards put it in your normal side parting wherever you want it to be and adjust it. Um, but yeah, this definitely worked better for me doing it this way this time. So I can see that layer there 
it's just way 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 too long I'm just deciding whether to cut it in one or two curls and I decided to split it into two and it's just massively too long so yeah I'm just gonna keep trimming just as before trimming through all the curls making sure every piece of hair gets trimmed and uh, making the, the length appropriate considering the other layers we've got we want this layer to be slightly shorter for a layered rounded cut I love how springy the curls are on this top layer here they're like pasta like foozly pasta sometimes you can just go in with the scissors like I did there and just chop the bits that you see sticking out which is a bit like topiary really so just checking through all the curls as I said and trimming that front section but we will properly be trimming the front section in a moment so I was just taking the ends off and as you go you'll probably see sections that now stand out as looking weird so the section at the front and I know we said we weren't going to take it too short because of um, the fact that it might curl up a bit more so I am just though going to take it a little bit shorter again because it is standing out as being far too long and again a shake to see how it all sits and you can figure out if there's any out of place pieces of hair that need cutting anymore so now we're on to the other side and we're going to do the exact same thing as before trim all the hair and make sure that it's the right length which would be slightly shorter than the layer below it if you have any mega chunky curls like I sometimes get in this area it can help to separate them before you cut them one of the reasons being if you cut them separately it can help them to sit separately when they're dry as well so just cutting through every single curl just taking off the ends and then we want to just have a look and check that we don't have any steppy layers like before as you can see there is a bit of a steppy layer there so I'm going to take some of the underneath here and cut it slightly shorter so we get a much more gradual look so now that's pretty much done I'm going to flip my head upside down give it a really 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 good fluff let all the hair fall how it's going to fall and pop it in its side parting as you can see I'm quite happy about the shape and the volume that have already appeared and you can see how it's sitting at the back as well pretty good quite happy with that so now I've put it in its usual side parting I can now see if there's any further sections that need to be trimmed because obviously so far I've cut it for a middle parting so that everything is equal so on both sides I'll just look and see where there's any flat sections or wonky or curls that are just out of place. I'm probably going to take these layers just a little bit shorter on the top layers uh, because that gives me a bit more volume and a more rounded shape which is what I really really like. So just as before get those back sections, pull them out to the back and then bring it round to the front so I can see to snip it. So that's that done. I'm going to shake it and just just kind of compare those layers obviously we've done this already when it was in the center parting but we just want to check that it still works in the side parting which it does so now I'm going to show you how I like to cut my fringe or bangs area depending on where you're from so just figuring out what is my fringe or bangs and clipping the rest out the way and then what I do is I take that section of hair and pull it taut to the other side of my face and then cut diagonally across the edge towards my face and then that really, really helps that little bit of hair to curl back into the rest of my hair. As you can see, it just helps it to blend in with the rest. And I learned that trick from the lovely Krista, Krista Levitt Curl Specialist, and I'll pop her handle here. I was having trouble with that piece of my hair and she really helped me out. So she's amazing. Go follow her on Instagram. And now I'm just doing a quick check over all the rest of my hair looking for any wonky bits that need to be cut a little bit shorter, any layers that need to be trimmed a bit more. <laughs> That's back to that super weird long hair that I've already cut so much of and it's still, still too long. And that's pretty much everything, just checking it over. And now I'm going to check the back. Now I've decided to really speed up this bit because it's exactly the same as you've already seen. It's just a case of using that mirror to look for sections that look like they need cutting a little bit more to kind of fill a gap or to make them even. 
or bits of hair where the curl pattern is not as tight so it looks a lot longer. So just like I've shown you before, checking, cutting a little bit, checking again and cutting more if needed. Okay, I think this is the very last and final snip of this haircut. Well, two snips. Okay, I lied. There's actually one final snip. I promise you this is the very last one. But as you see, the haircut comprises of lots of checking and double checking and just tiny little tweaks until you get that shape that you're looking for. So I think I have now achieved that shape and um, even though my hair is frizzy and obviously needing a wash, you can still see that the shape is much better than it was. So now I'm off to wash and style. Hi guys, I'm back. I have washed and styled my hair and I am so, so happy with how this has turned out. As you can see, I have a much more even rounded shape, um, but it's not gone too stringy at the ends. Um, so I wanted to shorten the layers, but I didn't want the ends to look stringy and, you know, kind of see through. Um, and I think I've achieved that. I'll show you the back. Now, the back is not my best wash day ever, but who cares? <laughs> no one's looking at it anyway, except you guys right now. Even though some of this hair isn't curling quite how it normally would, I can still see that the overall shape is good. And I'll leave this, you know, over the next couple of days, um, let it settle in. And then, you know, I might notice one or two bits that I want to trim um, just off the cuff as I go. And if I need to, then I will. But I really, really, really am so pleased with how this came out. It's much, much, much better shape and I haven't really lost any length. Which I, I didn't want to. It just looks nice and even and I've got more volume. I'm delighted. I hope that the video was helpful for you and if you try uh, this technique, any of the things I've done, then tag me on Instagram so that I can see. I would love to see your results. I can't wait to see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. Bye!